speaker today is Toastmaster James Hewitt, and he is giving his first speech as icebreaker. The title of his speech is Find Your Horse. Horse, yes. And he's very excited to be part of this club and plans to grow and develop with us with our help. Welcome. Good morning, Toastmasters. Good morning, James. Well, first of all, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here at 7.30 a.m. on this Friday morning. I know there's a million other places that you could have been. Uh, one being in your bed still slobbering and snoring if you're a drooler. <laughs> but thank you guys for coming here today. Also, thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to be a part of, of such a prestigious group of people. Thank you guys for that. I want to start this by asking a question. You guys can do it too. I want you guys to answer by a show of hands. How many of you have ever did anything or accomplished anything that either yourself or someone else didn't think that you could do? All right, well, I think I'm in the right place, unless you guys are lying. <laughs> but I'm going to believe you guys. The title of this speech is Find Your Horse. I am Toastmaster James Hewitt. That's nothing to do with nothing, I just want to say that. <laughs> I joined Toastmasters because I wanted to be able to construct and develop a message that is going to change the world. I will change the world by helping people find their horse. Right. Can I keep it real with you guys this morning? Yeah. I get a little comfortable. I'm like this. My tie is probably too short, but that's okay. I used to be gangster. Oh yeah, I was a ride. <laughs> Seriously. I was born in Kansas City, Missouri to a single mother who was only 18 years old. When my mother was pregnant, my father went to prison. He did over eight years in prison. I was ripping and running the streets with my friends, doing a lot of things I had no business doing. Until one day, it was in my senior year of high school. I had what people call today a come to Jesus meeting with myself. Where I got up and I looked at myself. I said, you are greater. I told myself, I said, you can change the world. Your life is valuable. And that day, I made a decision. I said, as soon as I graduate high school, I'm going to move somewhere far away, as far as possible, in the same country where I can start a new life, have a fresh slate, and make my own way without having any option. I chose to come to Orlando, Florida. When I first made that decision, I told some close friends and family, they didn't really believe me. They're all like laughing. They're like, oh yeah, I don't think you're going to do that. If you do, you're probably crazy. You don't know anyone, blah, blah, blah. Even teachers, they were super professional. I would go to my teachers tell them, hey, this is my plan. I want to do this. And they're like, uh, yeah, shoot for the stars. <laughs> Through all of that, I stayed determined. I had a goal in my mind, and I knew what I wanted to do. And I was going to do it no matter what it takes. Guys, I saved up enough money for a plane ticket, for a deposit on rent with a roommate whom I met over the internet through a school forum. And I came to Orlando with one bag of clothes, not knowing a soul, not a job, on faith that I would make it happen because I didn't have a choice. It was a big risk, it was a leap of faith, but it is something that I had to do. I had to buy a horse. Gosh, why think I'm crazy? What does buying a horse have to do with anything? You'll learn in a second, don't worry. I had to buy a horse. I stand in front of you today as a leader of the world's largest furniture company today. Not only that, I stand before you today as a new business owner of a motivational speaking company. No one in a million years, six years ago, when I was a gangster or ride, would ever think that I would be where I'm at today. Would think that I would be in front of such a prestigious club speaking in front of you guys today. Not even myself. No one would have ever imagined that I would buy a horse. Now, I know you guys are wondering, why do you keep talking about a horse? Oh, it's weird. It looks like you're riding a horse. I have, by the way, just so you know. <laughs> so, I'm going to tell you guys a story. It was maybe a few months ago. 
I was opening a new store. I opened the, the largest actually furniture store in the nation, over 70,000 square feet. You guys need furniture? I'm the man. I can get you to come. <laughs> and it was me and the other manager, Corey. Corey is a middle-aged Caucasian man. He's pretty wealthy. He had just bought his daughter a horse for her birthday. We were having a conversation with some of the salespeople, and they're talking, and they go, yeah, there was a customer here yesterday. They were talking about the manager they worked with, and we were trying to figure out who it was, and it didn't dawn on us until they said, oh, I think he had a horse. And they were like, that's when we got back, you knew it was Corey. And me being a jokester that I am, I'm like, well, what do you mean? What if it was me? They're like, come on. I'm like, what? I can't have a horse? <laughs> they're like, well, don't you live in an apartment? And I say, oh, okay, fair game. Harmless, harmless conversation. It was funny, but I walked away from that conversation, and for some reason it hit me. I got real serious and deep in thought. I said, what do people really expect from me? How do people view my potential? How do they view my value to the world? How do they view James? I made the decision from that day forward that I was going to buy horses, that I would break through any barrier, no matter what people expected me to do, like I've been doing the whole, my whole life. That I would reach ceilings, that I would go places and do things that no one expected me to do. So now, I am here today to find people just like myself, not only help them buy the horse, but to buy not one, not two, not three, but to continue to buy horses for the rest of their lives. Thank you.